the first of our next suite of experts. Uh, and by all means, as the wine bottles come into the tables, crack them open, pour yourself a half glass. Uh, you've all earned it. Uh, so yes, the first of our next suite of experts, CEO and co-founder of Tillit, James Balzari, who's going to present on increasing resilience in manufacturing operations through the use of digital platforms and AI. James, come on up. Uh, as Max said, yeah, I'm James Balzari, CEO and co-founder of Tillit. And Tillit is a company that's really passionate about empowering manufacturing through the use of digital platforms, digital manufacturing operations technology. And we do that because we think the manufacturing industry is a really important one. We all like to consume stuff. I like to consume stuff relatively quickly. And I don't like waiting 12 weeks for global supply chain challenges to deliver something to my door that I might want to consume. But manufacturing is often held up as a poster child for AI. And the reality is the adoption of some of these technologies, particularly in a large portion of the manufacturing industry, is perhaps less than you would anticipate. Let me get forward. So we'll be talking about improving resilience in this really critical industry. We ask ourselves the question, is manufacturing a smart industry? Well, the image that Matt showed earlier of robots building Fords or Volkswagens just simply doesn't translate to the majority of manufacturers around the world. 95% of the world's manufacturing is classified as SME. That means they're less than one or two hundred million dollars in turnover, less than 500 staff. And if you ask them, you know, their adoption level or rates of AI usage, you'll generally get pretty blank stares. What we see often is that 90% of these businesses still capture information on paper, whether it's a production metric, a maintenance check, or a quality check on what they're making, it's still done on paper. 75% of all of the equipment in the global manufacturing industry isn't connected to anything. There's no smart sensors, there's no AI, there's no cloud analytics system, it's just a dumb piece of physical infrastructure sitting there. And the adoption of AI in these businesses is likely to be fairly low for the foreseeable future because when you walk into these factories and you show them the future of manufacturing, perhaps with a lights out environment, they can't reconcile what they have today with how to get there. So the challenge is how do we transform these businesses to adopt you know, a staged approach to industry four um, and, and get them there as, uh, as previous speakers have said, in a, a lighter weight staged approach. We think it's going to take 10 plus years before the universal adoption of integrated AI in these types of businesses even starts to gain traction. So once again, reinforcing the future is bright. Um, we feel that all is not lost in the utilization of AI in these types of businesses, but there's a few really important uh, things that are foundational principles that need to be in place. And we'll show you some case studies of companies that have achieved that after. But if we were to define what smart manufacturing is, I think we've heard some of it this morning, really it's about two key concepts, integration and intelligence applied to physical processes, equipment, behaviours, machines. And it may or may not include sort of complex algorithmic calculations or logic, which are designed to automate what a human would normally do. So if you're a manufacturing company, or any company really, and your objective is profit or risk mitigation or efficiency outcomes, you may want to innovate. And the history of manufacturing is to innovate by buying a piece of equipment and automating it. Most of the robots that you see in a manufacturing facility, in fact, don't have any AI on them at all. They're programmed with logic controllers in a very distinct way to perform specific tasks. There's no learning, there's no inference, there's nothing. But they seem to be doing really cool things and it results in a hugely efficient outcome. When businesses do apply AI or ML, specifically in the manufacturing industry, they may fail. And the reality is Accenture and Gartner, name your company that does research in this topic, will still confirm that today 85% of all of these AI initiatives do fail. And we ask ourselves the question, why? 
And it's the bunch of reasons, the grab bag of change management, lack of preparedness, lack of knowledge or resources in-house, and importantly, as we've heard today, the lack of verified, accurate, real-time data to build models upon and do clever things. So if you can automate on the back of AI, great, whether it's robotic process automation, if you need to have people in your business or in the physical environment, then it's really difficult to automate. You automate away the repetitive, dangerous tasks, perhaps, and replace the human with a robot. But invariably, businesses still need people. And if, sorry, I'll go back. Um, if you can't inform a person, either using AI or otherwise, on what they should be doing as, as far as a prescribed task that, uh, or activity that needs to be carried out in a business, then uh, it's very difficult to learn from that and put intelligence on top of an individual person. And we like to illustrate that with a little infographic that kind of illustrates what we see when we walk into the average manufacturing plant. On the left-hand side, you see a traditional factory. There's a whiteboard, as Matt described earlier, with perhaps a planning function. There's KPIs on this whiteboard which are scribbled every day. People gather around with clipboards and they talk about what they're going to do today or how they did yesterday. What information is recorded in a factory looks like this in 90% of the factories around the world. A piece of paper where people write down how many do we produce, why did the machine stop, what went wrong, is there any other comments. And this ends up maybe in a spreadsheet, maybe compiled in a report three days later. So if you want to do clever things and you want to embark on a digital manufacturing future, you need to really begin at the beginning. And when the machine or the piece of equipment doesn't have any sensorization or real-time verified data coming off it, throw an IoT sensor out there at 50 bucks a month and start to capture that data. You can do that now. Battery powered, costs you nothing. From there, you can start to derive KPIs or insights that deliver tangible business value. Why is our machine stopping? How are we performing to target? But where you really start to get interesting traction and where uh, we at Tillit get super passionate about transforming businesses is bringing the people into the equation. So, as I said, businesses run on a whole bunch of activities that need to be done. In a manufacturing operation that is digital, you prescribe to an operator what needs to be done, the time frame under which that task needs to be carried out. You're able to analyze whether the operator or the person skipped the activity, or whether the activity record didn't conform, perhaps to a quality target or a, or a, a time-based target. And when you combine the people and their activities with the machine view and, um, and the, the cleverness that comes uh, off board with those types of approaches, you really start to get a holistic business view that incorporates not just the equipment, but the personnel and their behaviours and how are they doing? Are they doing the right thing in the right place at the right time? And you get a unified view of the business around uh, performance uh, and you can then start to do really clever things like a prescriptive algorithm scheduling solution that's telling you what you should be doing. Um, perhaps some statistical process control or analysis on quality metrics. So the foundational aspects of getting that right for traditional industries like manufacturing is really important. That bottom-up approach, we think, leads to better and more successful business outcomes. And we'll illustrate that with a couple of case studies. So Schneider Electric, you might know the Clipsal brand. They make light switches and electronic components out of Jeps Cross, one of the largest manufacturers in the state. Uh, they approached this challenge by first getting a baseline digital manufacturing platform in place to capture the information that was um, previously paper-based in their business. And then once they'd done that, they were able to reach out and grab a, an AI or prescriptive algorithm injected in uh, a tillet production scheduling solution and then start to improve the way that they think about their business operations, optimising injection moulding machines, reducing staff um, shortages or staff over allocation, and you know, running an ML model to predict future production rates, perhaps using some AWS capability. Another great case study is Oliveria, excellent brand, last kitchen sink manufacturer in Australia. I encourage you all, if you're going to buy a kitchen sink, buy it from Oliveria because their factory is in Regency Park. 
And that press machine you see there in that photo is 30 or 40 years old and, and doesn't have any automation on it. No sensors, no nothing. They can't replace that piece of equipment because it's either too expensive or the new piece of equipment won't make a sink as well. And what we did with these guys is did the retrofit IoT sensor onto the machine, started to ca capture press rates, stoppage reasons, downtime reasons, and then transformed with some prescriptive AI algorithms and scheduling improvement. And the results were really tangible. So increased throughput of 2%, a reduction in work in progress and finished goods inventory, a reduction in wastage. So the outcomes are there, but the approach is the same. And our, one of our favorite customers in the last, I guess, six months is an iconic South Australian brand you might never have heard of called Lifestyle Bakeries out of Paraka. And they make gluten-free bread. And this business was completely paper-based. You would walk out and see dough being made, tipped out of, out, of, out of buckets into loaf sort of and baking and packaging environments and everything was written down on paper. So what we did with these guys is transform their business first by removing all the paper and really building that knowledge base and getting activities and workflow driven tasks rolled through the company to the point now where they can really look for some smarter capability around doing things like classifying what bread is coming down the line using a, a vision-based detection system is the right bread that the package says it is. So camera, looking at a loaf of bread, is that the gluten-free sourdough with the sesame seeds on top? Yes, it is. Okay, someone's not gonna die now. So it's really important that you can um, you know, do things like that, do it quickly, but once again, you need the foundation principle in place. So look, at Tillet, we think it's incumbent that businesses understand the capability of AI or advanced techniques in their organization, but look at that through the lens of how humans interact with those types of systems. Um, we think it's a fair challenge or assumption to say perhaps the majority of AI projects fail because the insight might be sound, it might be a great plan or a great schedule, but unless it's orchestrated and executed in a very structured way at a person level, then you know, do you really know what you said should happen, does happen. So, yes, artificial intelligence is important. It does deliver, if it's structured properly, actionable insights. That should lead to audited instructions based on activities and what people do. And what you then get is augmented individuals. And I apologize for all the AI acronyms, but we think that it's really important that you're combining these advanced capabilities and techniques with the reality of the people involvement in the process, particularly in an industry like manufacturing. And if you do these things, then we're strongly confident that we will improve resilience in the manufacturing industry. Thank you.